Hello and welcome, I'm Kim Scrivener and today I'm going to review The Swimmers by Julia Asuka because it is a new favorite novel I think. I am kind of in love. This is her third novel. She published her first one, Whenever Was Divine, in 2002, which looks at Japanese internment camps in World War II, which I believe is based on some family history. This is when everyone of Japanese descent was rounded up and forcibly had their property and everything taken away from them, and from four to six years were completely incapable of having any autonomy in their lives. And this is something that still has impacts in both Canada and the United States where it was enacted. And her second novel is called The Buddha in the Attic and it is a 2011 novel that looks at these picture brides who are coming over in early 1900s America to be married. And I've heard of the second novel, I've not heard of the first one, and then this one came out and I always like an author who takes some time to write some books and who writes some short books. This is a book that is just over 150 pages and her other books are quite short as well and I think that having that craft and stuff like that is really really good. This is a book that has been well received in some areas and not as well received in others. Its biggest complaint is that it is disjointed and I am going to read some sections of this today to prove that I don't think this is disjointed at all. I think that it is a masterpiece and that it is a very very good book that looks at this one character in many different forms. We do often have a choral voice or a first person plural voice narrating the story, but I think that that is consistent throughout and tells the story of Alice really really well and the ways in which these stories are going on. I want to read part of the story so I'm going to begin with reading the first section and that is called The Underground Pool, which is obviously where the title comes in, and this is the beginning. The pool is located deep underneath in a large cavernous chamber many feet beneath the streets of our town. Some of us come here because we are injured and need to heal. We suffer from bad backs, fallen arches, shattered dreams, broken hearts, anxiety, melancholia, anhemia, and the usual above ground afflictions. Others of us are employed at the college nearby and prefer to take our lunch breaks down below, in the many waters far away from the harsh glares of our colleagues and screens. Some of us come here to escape, if only for an hour, our disappointing marriages on land. Many of us live in the neighborhood and simply love to swim. One of us, Alice, is a retired lab technician, now in the early stages of dementia, comes here because she always has, and even though she may not remember the combination into her locker or where she put down her towel, the moment she slips into the water, she knows what to do. Her stroke is blonde and fluid, her kick is strong, her mind is clear. Up there, she says, I'm just another little old lady, but down here at the pool, I am myself. So though we have this plural idea, we know and are introduced to Alice before any other character. This is the story of Alice. Though Alice says very little in her own words, we have this one, this collective swimmers who are all kind of obsessed almost in a cult-like fashion to this. However, I would also argue that a lot of us are obsessed in cult-like fashions of many things, whether it's a sports team or a hobby or a book series or many things like we love and I think we are drawn to fanaticism a little bit and I say that hyperbolically obviously but I also think that it's true. Last night I somehow ended up with an acquaintance at his family's birthday party in which I'm not really familiar with many of the people there and yet as I talk to them about their lives and stuff like that and they got into the Toronto Maple Leafs and you know were cheering them on. I found myself quietly and then not so quietly gunning for them to come back and not be shut out in the playoffs and this is a team I historically hate because you know I'm from Ottawa and they're from Toronto and you know you have to keep those rivalries even though you've lived near Toronto your entire adult life but there's like this effectiveness and contagiousness of loving something and when you come together you have this connection and I think that it really really shows how Alice who is starting to forget things and stuff is able to come into this and have this choral identity with these people and just as it says when her hands reach the waves she knows what to do and this part deals with a crack a crack that eventually leads the swimming pool to be shut down and I'm not going to be too like sparse with spoilers because I don't think this book is really a spoiler heavy book in general. It's a literary fiction book through and through. It's about this character Alice and her journey. She has dementia and you know she's not doing that well. So I'm assuming you could probably guess the progression of this novel and I don't think that if you're looking for twists and turns you should read this. If you really want to see this really poignant, really tender, really evocative telling of a woman going through dementia through the various people in her lives, I think that this is a really good book. 
So I'm going to go to the second section and this is kind of a halt that really looks. And I lost one of my things. These are beautiful metal bookmarks that my friend gave me that I love. One of them fell out. So I'm hoping I can find the section because I was having trouble finding the final section because I read it on audio originally. And then I went halfway through the book to get it from the library because I was like, yes, I need this book right now. And then the second section begins with she remembers her name. She remembers the name of the president. She remembers the name of the president's dog. She remembers what town she lives in and on what street and in which house. The one with the big olive tree where the road takes a turn. She remembers what year it is. She remembers the season. She remembers the day on which you were born. She remembers the daughter who was born before you. She had your father's nose and that was the first thing I noticed about her. But she does not remember that daughter's name. She remembers the name of the man she did not marry, Frank and she keeps his letters in a drawer by her bed. She remembers that you once had a husband, but she refuses to remember your ex-husband's name. That man, she calls him. She does not remember how she got the bruises on her arms or going for a walk with you earlier in the morning. She does not remember bending over during the walk and plucking a flower from her neighbor's front yard, slipping it into her hair. Maybe your father will kiss me now. She does not remember what she ate for dinner last night or when she last took her medicine. She does not remember to drink enough water. She does not remember to comb her hair. I love this section. This might be my favorite section. Like the first section has this kind of haunting intrigue to it that I really love. But this section looks at dementia. It looks at the ways in which her daughter is narrating this. This is another choral voice in many ways because it's going through this various situations. It looks at her time in internment camps as well because she's Japanese American. She was interned during the 1940s and it is a section that is poignant because as it goes on she does remember less and then it more quickly than the first section flips into the third which is called Bella Vista and this section I felt was equally a little bit haunting as well. You are here today because you have failed the test. Maybe you were unable to draw all the numbers on the clock face or spell the word backwards, or remember even one of the five unrelated words that were just recited to you mere minutes ago by one of the professionally trained testers. Or maybe for the first time ever, you couldn't comply to the cube. I'm not in the mood, you said, or you totally bought the executive function alternating trail making section or your social integration score came back as a dismal one. Or maybe you didn't even take the test. Maybe you went out to the supermarket to buy a carton of eggs and came back two days later with an overripe mango instead. Got it. Or you tried to race past the first truck, but I signaled. Or you couldn't remember how to make your famous rustic plum tart. Or perhaps unbemost to you, you have become an extremely difficult person to live with. You won't eat, you won't bath, you get up 10 times, sometimes 20 times a night, driving your loved ones to exhaustion. Or maybe your husband simply put you in the car this morning and told you he was taking you for a ride. Or your daughter announced that she had made arrangements and you thought, great, a plan. And here you are. Welcome to Bella Vista. We are a long-term, for-profit memory residence conveniently located on a former parking lot off the freeway just minutes from the Valley Plaza Mall. Other names we have gone by in the past is Heritage Pont, Palomar Gardens, Municipal War Three, The Villagers of Pacifica, also The Nice Place, The New Place, The Last Place, A Wonderful Place, you'll love it, and most recently by an eight-year-old boy to his mother from behind the tinted glass windows of the rapidly departing SUV, The Bug House. And it goes on, and I really love this section too. I think that it has a little bit of a haunting overview as well. But I think that you can see that even though it's different from the first section and different from the second section, that there are some ties that hold it together. There's a kind of same narrative voice that is telling the story of Alice because she's now in a retirement house. And I really like this style. I like that it goes on and tells something really, really well. And then the last section is very hard and it begins. What was it, you wonder, that first made her begin to forget? Was it the chemical in the hair dye that once turned her scalp bright red for two weeks? Was it something toxic in the hairspray, Aquanet, that she used two and sometimes three times a day for more than 30 years? Hold your breath, she said as she passed down on the nozzle and disappeared beneath a cloud of cold white mist. Was it the raid that she sprayed all over the kitchen counter the minute she saw an ant? Was it sporadic, genetic, a series of mini strokes, something in the drinking water, too little sleep she had been complaining about your father snoring ever since the day she had married. Too much TV, a dearth of hobbies, hobbies she once said, who has time for hobbies? 
Should she have eaten more blueberries, less butter, read more books, read even one book? You don't remember ever seeing her read a single book. Although there was always piled high on the nightstand beside the mountain of stray socks, a stack of books she meant to read. I'm okay. You're okay. How to talk to teenagers. Teach yourself French in one week. Was it the hormone replacement after menopause? The estriol, the Provera, the high blood pressure, the medication for high blood pressure, her undiagnosed thyroid condition, the deep and lingering depression she fell into the year after her mother died three days short of 101. Now, what am I supposed to do, she said. Was it you? And that's the beginning of the fourth section. And as you can tell, it's again narrated by the daughter. And I think that it is incorrect to say that these are disjointed. The first section is about the swimmers, but as I showed, introduces Alice in the first part. And this section is dealing with, you know, the guilt and the aftermath of what does it look like to grieve and watch someone deteriorate. It's a really, really powerful book and I really treasure it. I got choked up in places and I laughed in places and I really like the tone. I find, you know, the narrative quite funny and I like the list making and stuff like that. That's something that ties all of these sections together. So I don't know if it is a book that you will gravitate toward. I don't know if it's a book that you might call disjointed, but I think that it's a really powerful, really poignant book. I think that it really clearly shows the character of Alice and her daughter. Her daughter is never named, but I think that you see these characters really evidently. And I think that the swimmers and other characters you also feel connected to, even though you don't follow them after the original section. I think that it is supposed to highlight that all of these people have so many things going on. And Alice is just one example of those people. And I do love the idea of how all of these people come in together and have these kind of shared life and shared things, even though so many other things are whirling around them. Virginia Woolf has this short story called Kew Gardens that I really love. And it's about this woman in this garden in, you know, England, and she's watching everyone walk by and she's imagining what their lives are. And I've always loved that. I always love imagining what people's lives look like. And I think that this is kind of a testament to that. I think that, I don't know, based on my thoughts, it might be based on her life a little bit because the daughter is revealed to be a novelist as well. I just dropped the book. So I could be reading into her daughter being a novelist, being autofiction, and this being the story of her mother, but I don't know. But I do know that I think that it shows that any one of these characters that are mentioned at the beginning could have been followed through. What does their lives look like? But she chose Alice, and I think that that is really nice. I would really recommend reading this book. I think that it is a really short book, and we so often don't get the point of view of elderly characters. Even though Alice's point of view is not the one that is given as many words, I think that her story is evidently told, and it's also told about the effects of disability and disease on other people as well. And yeah, it is a book that I think I'm going to treasure for a really long time and I would love to see more people read it.